and welcome to the official Stan YouTube channel. In this video, you will learn about how to model heterogeneity using Stan. But before we can start, we must first understand another concept, that of homogeneity. Homogeneity is a characteristic of a dataset if subsamples within that dataset have the same or similar statistical properties. Generally, when we're talking about modeling homogeneity, what we're really interested in is the modeling of homogeneity of variance, also known as homoscedasticity. Homoscedastic data refers to variables being homogeneous or uniformly distributed. For example, simple linear models, like the ones that we modeled in the linear regression video, I'll put the link here in case you missed it, um, tend to assume a constant variance. The data are evenly distributed about the regression line across all covariate values x. The opposite of homogeneity is heterogeneity, which is the characteristic of a dataset if subsamples within that dataset have different statistical properties. For example, when the variance of variate y increases as a function of covariate x. This non-uniform variance is called heteroscedasticity and is a special case of continuous heterogeneity. A more common scenario is when you have multiple datasets and want to infer parameters of the combined datasets. Like say if you were interested in the relationship between house prices over the last decade and unemployment rate. The relationship for each state may vary from the relationship for the whole of the USA combined. This would be an example of discrete heterogeneity, which we typically would model using a hierarchical model. We will be looking at hierarchical models and discrete heterogeneity in a future video. Today, we will focus on modeling of heteroscedasticity. Given a heteroscedastic data sample, we can fit a linear regression model assuming homoscedasticity. The STAN model looks like the following. In the data block, we define the number of samples n, the variates y, and the covariates x. The parameters block defines the intercept alpha, the slope beta, and the variance sigma. And the model block defines the priors on those parameters, and the Gaussian likelihood assuming a constant variance. After fitting the model to the data and looking at the pairs plot of the regression parameters, it's clear that the input parameters are not well recovered. In particular, the fitted variance is very wrong. This stresses the importance of using a model that fits the data. We can't accurately infer the parameters alpha and beta without accurately modeling how they are modified in the data generating process. Even the best phenomenological model will be limited by poor environmental and experimental models. Homogeneity is a systematic effect that we need to account for in order to capture the underlying phenomena that we expect to be homogeneous, so that it will also generalize to other circumstances. In this case, we know that the variance increases with x, and therefore we should adopt a heterogeneous model that takes this into account. Here, we simply change the standard deviation in the Gaussian likelihood to incorporate the dependence on the covariate as follows. Using this heteroscedastic model, we are then able to recover the underlying regression parameters. In this example, the data is heteroscedastic and normal. The variance increases in a monotonic way. However, in real life situations, it's rare that the data collected will be homogeneous or that the change in variance will be homogeneous. Ensuring that heterogeneity is accounted for is important for parameter inference. But modeling the heterogeneity in itself can also be important. Non-normal heteroscedasticity is commonly found in time series data in areas such as finance and economics, where the scale of the noise terms varies over time. 
modeling heterogeneity here has applications including asset pricing and risk management, where it is equivalent to modeling the volatility, a measure of the degree of variation in the data. Let's say, for example, we're interested in purchasing some stocks. Ideally, we want to buy it during a period when the stock market has low volatility, where the variation in the stock prices is low. In this example, we will take the built-in R dataset EU stock markets, and in particular, the FTSE. If you're not using R, then the dataset can be found in the link in the description box below. First, plotting the data can be useful to visualize the variance and assess homogeneity. In order to model the volatility of the FTSE data, we need to first look at the percentage change, which we can see here is heterogeneous. A common way to model this is called an ARCH model, which stands for Autoregressive Conditional Heteroscedasticity. Autoregressive models are those where the prediction are dependent on the previous states. And therefore, in the most simple variation, the ARCH1 model, um, the heteroscedasticity is conditional on the previous value. Similarly, ARCH2 models are dependent on the previous two values, and so on and so on. The ARCH1 model says that the point R of t is constant mu plus an error term at time t, a of t, where a can be broken down into a stochastic noise term, eta, such as a Gaussian, and a time-dependent noise term, sigma, which is dependent on the error term at the previous time step. In the STAN model, we write a data block which takes into account the number of data points t and the data which are real values. The parameters block is the average return mu and the noise parameters for the intercept and slope, where the slope is bounded between 0 and 1 to ensure the time series is stationary. Finally, in the model block, we define some broad priors on the parameters and the likelihood, a Gaussian centered on the average return and the scale equal to the square root of alpha 0 plus alpha 1 times r at t minus 1 minus mu squared. We prepare the data as a list and fit it with STAN, and from the extracted parameters, we can make predictions of the volatility given the previous data value. When we plot the predicted volatility over the variability of the market data, we see that the model is a good fit. Note that they don't fit exactly because they're not showing exactly the same things. In black, we have the true return, and in red, we have the volatility. But the volatility increases where there are large percentage changes in the market, which is what we are interested in. We now know when the market volatility is low and can use this to make informed decisions whether to play the stocks. However, note that the fitted model is very flat, and this is very common with ARCH models. They're susceptible to bursts, spikes of volatility. A better way to model the heterogeneity is to use a generalized autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity model, or a GARCH model. It's similar to the ARCH model, however, it not only takes into account the previous data values, but also takes into account the previous volatility values. And since the volatility is propagated over time, this makes it less susceptible to bursts of volatility. Like the ARCH1 model, the GARCH11 model takes into account the previous value and the previous volatility value. The GARCH22 model takes into account the previous two returning values and the previous two volatility values. And these enter the time-dependent noise term, sigma, as follows. For the STAM model, in addition to the number of data points and the percentage change data, we also must define the volatility at the first time step. The parameters are the same as previous, but now we have the additional slope from the previous volatility component, beta 1, and the constraint that the sum of alpha 1 and beta 1 must be less than 1. To keep things clean, in this model we will write sigma, as we have just defined, 
inside of a transformed parameters block. And then again, the model block defines wide priors on the parameters and the Gaussian likelihood. Again, we format the input data as a list, not forgetting to set an arbitrary value of the first volatility and fit the model with Stan. We again extract the parameters and use them to make the predictions to plot over the market data. Here we see that again, we get a really nice correlation with the percentage changes. But compared with the ARCH model, the predicted volatility is now much smoother and closer matching to the data. Lastly, since we're using an MCMC approach, we get the full posteriors on the parameters, which we can use to show the uncertainties on the predictions. We calculate the 5 and 95% quantiles from the posteriors of the parameters and add this to our plot. but it's clear that the uncertainties are tiny. There are plenty more variations of models like ARCH and GARCH models for modeling heterogeneity, but hopefully this can get you started. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please consider donating to Stan so that we can continue to produce videos like this one and subscribing so you're in touch with the latest content. I'll put the link in the description box below.